So this lecture is a little bit uh, out of sync because deals with something that we will do after dynamic programming, but namely max flow, mean cut kind of stuff. But uh, since it doesn't depend on uh, max flow algorithms at all, um, it, uh, we can do it now. And it's one of the prettiest uh, randomized algorithms that I know of, and it's a famous Karger mean cut algorithm. So what is a mean cut problem? <coughs> mean cut is the following problem. Assume that you have a connected graph that is weight, uh, weighted, right? Uh, edges have uh, weights associated with them, and so forth. So mean cut is simply partitioning. Uh, so this will be given with weights. So if this is a vertex i and j, you have the weight of uh, ij. Uh, so, and we assume that uh, uh, the graph is non-directed, so undirected. Graph with uh, uh, each, so weight of the edge uh, i j for simplicity we denote it just as weight i j which is a <coughs> positive number okay so a cut in a graph is simply partitioning the whole graph g into uh, two subsets u uh, union uh, v such that uh, u intersected v is equal to empty set and uh, both u and v are not equal to empty, right? Um, so an edge is across the cut say here k and j, uh, if uh, one side of the edge is in u and the other side is in v, right? And then the capacity of a cut uh, c, that is uh, the pair of u, v, right? Uh, is uh, the total sum is sum of the weights of all edges such that edge i so that uh, um, so that vertex a belongs to u uh, and uh, vector uh, the other one j belongs to v. Right, so it's a sum total of the weights of all edges that go across the cut, right? Now, we will show that this type of problems can be solved using max flow of network. Uh, so you will have a, you will assign to graph a, a flow network, um, and uh, then finding a minimal cut uh, will correspond to finding max flow, except that you have to specify from which to which uh, vertex the flow is, and uh, uh, the source belongs to one side of partition and the sink into other. But you can ignore uh, this because uh, finding mean cut using max flow takes uh, a uh, number of vertices to the fourth power, uh, the fastest algorithm that we have. So if you are looking to find 
uh, and uh, you know, n to the order, n to the fourth power is extremely slow algorithm, right? It's a kind of borderline of, uh, you know, if n is uh, reasonably large, it becomes essentially intractable. So the idea is uh, to solve the very same problem using a randomized uh, algorithm that whose uh, uh, probability of failure uh, can be made uh, as small uh, as you wish uh, in, uh, uh, in a reasonable amount of time, right? So <coughs> we will now show <coughs> how to find mean cut with very high probability <coughs> using a randomized algorithm, okay? And the basic idea is extraordinarily simple, but just how you build the whole algorithm from that basic idea is actually really sophisticated and tricky. And it, it's an ideal example of uh, a probability boosting method um, that uh, uh, applies to uh, other uh, problems as well. So what is the basic operation that we will be using? It's collapsing edges, right? So if you have a graph, maybe I can do this here. So this is equal uh, capacity uh, of, uh, um, of cut C, right? So the basic operation is uh, if I have my graph, right, um, and all the edges have weights, uh, I will be picking edges randomly. Each edge can be picked with probability proportional to its weight. So probability that I pick uh, an edge E i j will be equal to the weight i j divided by sum of the weights uh, m k when m k belongs to g. Uh, well, that's not, it doesn't have to be complete graph, but uh, when the edge uh, m k belongs to g. So this is the sum of the weights of all edges in the graph, and this is just the weight of edge ij, so uh, we divide with this because then what is the sum of all these probabilities over all edges? Of course, the sum will be this divided by itself, so it's one. <coughs> so I will be picking edges according to their weights, the larger the, uh, the weight of an edge with higher probability, I will pick it. <coughs> After I pick this edge, I collapse the, uh, sorry, I, uh, af after I pick the edge, I collapse the edge by fusing the two vertices together. And then <coughs> if I had here, uh, say this is my uh, I, and this is my J, and here I had a vertex K, and here a vertex, say, M, right? Uh, and if I had uh, maybe only some of these edges, so in the new graph, uh, right, uh, I will have a new edge, let's call it uh, IJ, because it's obtained by fusing edge I and J, and uh, connect the edges, the new edges will look like this. Uh, with k will be the weight of this edge, will be weight of kj plus uh, weight of ki, 
right? Because as you collapse these two together, these two edges will fuse into a single edge, and this single edge uh, inherits the weight that is sum of the weights of the uh, two edges, right? Kj is this one, and uh, Ki is this one, and after fusion, I will get uh, edge uh, K and then this pair IJ whose weight will be the sum of the weights of these edges that will merge into a single edge, okay? Do you understand what, how it works, right? Simply if this was the weight three, this was weight five, it will become a single vertex here of weight eight, right? So now, as we do that, uh, we want to see how the mean cut of the new graph, uh, how it relates to the mean cut of the previous graph. Uh, and we consider two cases, right? Uh, one is uh, if you, V, um, uh, belong, uh, to the same partition of uh, uh, the cut C, i.e. either what UV belongs to capital U or UV uh, both belong to V. What happens in this case? Uh, well, let's look. So this is your graph. This is the cut, and say here are vertices U and V. Say you have a, a vertex uh, um, in the opposite side, say P, <coughs> and uh, this is the weight of UV, and this is the weight of PV, right? After I do the fusion business, what will I get? I'll get a new graph. So this is original graph G. This is G prime. And the surgery will produce a single vertex UV. And because I'm merging the two vertices in such a way that the weight of uh, UV and P is uh, equal to weight of UP plus the weight of VP. The capacity across the cut will not change at all, right? After uh, I fuse, because I replace this with the sum of the capacities, of course, the <coughs> capacity of uh, all edges so we can then conclude that uh, uh, mean cut of G must be equal to mean cut of uh, uh, G prime. Okay? So that's the first case. Uh, if uh, uh, we fuse vertices that belong to the same side of the mean cut, Nothing can change. Uh, yes? Um, what's the aim of the algorithm? We are trying to find the capacity of, mean, of the mean cut. What is that? So the, didn't I say? Uh, sorry if I might have. I'm sorry I didn't sleep very well last night. Uh, so uh, a cut is uh, simply partition of the graph into two subsets of vertices, right? And the capacity of the cut is some total of the weights of edges that go across the cut. We want to find the cut with the minimal possible capacity. Right, so we want to find, and one way of doing it is through max flow, but it's extremely inefficient. It's, uh, uh, the cardinality of vertices, so if your graph has n vertices, it's n to the fourth, uh, the fastest way known to do it. Uh, 
And so we want to try to reduce these four because it's just tragically large, okay? And we do the, <coughs> the procedure. Well, first I want to give you main idea and then we will refine it. Uh, <coughs> idea is uh, simply um, keep collapsing uh, edges by picking them always proportional to their weight. How do we find this probability? We sum up the weights of all edges and we <coughs> divide weight of edge ij by the sum of all edges. This sums up to one, so it's well-defined probability and we do random picking of edges according to with probability of each edge being picked equal to proportional to its weight. And you keep doing that. Uh, we assume that the graph was connected. So you keep doing that until you get a single edge. And then you call that edge when one is vertex is in one side, the other vertex in the other side of the cut. You claim that this is the mean cut. Whatever is left, so uh, say if you have uh, four edges, uh, I mean uh, four vertices, and you have a graph that looks like that, and say first I uh, collapse these two uh, edges, so this will give me a graph that looks like this, right? Now I say collapse these two edges, I will get a graph that looks just like this, and I take the capacity of this edge uh, to be the capacity of the mean cut. Now we want to estimate what's the probability that we will get the right answer, right? Obviously it cannot be very large because you pick things at random, <coughs> but uh, uh, we will boost that probability. So first we want to see how the capacity of the mean cut, how it, does it change as you um, proceed with, uh, with collapses, right? As you call, uh, keep collapsing edges. And what we saw is that whenever you collapse an edge that is uh, in the same, both ends in the same partition, the capacity of mean cut doesn't change. Why? Well, if you had edges that were across with U and V that were in opposite sides of the mean cut, when you collapse them, right, they will simply sum up, right? And you are replacing this pipe going across the cut and that pipe with a single pipe, but the weight uh, will be just the sum of the weights of these two guys. So the capacity of the cut will remain unchanged, right? Now let's see what happens if I collapse things that are in the same, uh, sorry, in the opposite side of the mean cut. So assume that I have this is my mean cut, and I collapse these vertices, right? So uh, a new guy will have, so if this is u, this is v, this is u, v, and uh, I claim that the capacity um, of the mean cut here, so uh, capacity of the mean cut in G prime, which is obtained after collapsing, right? So this is G, this is G prime. So the capacity of mean cut in G prime is always bigger or equal than the capacity of mean cut in G. The reason for that uh, is very simple. You see, uh, if you look at this graph, uh, I can 
and say this is its mean cut, right? What I can do is uh, I can split apart these two collapse vertices, uh, right? And uh, have a graph that looks like this. Now, this graph is obtained from that graph by simply moving this guy in the same uh, side of partition as u is, right? So this cut here is already available in this graph, right? Because if I split the two vertices but still keep them in the same side of the partition, right, then this cut is simply one of the cuts in the original graph, right? If I split the vertices but keep, it would essentially be obtained by moving this vertex here, right? So what does this mean? You see, now you have two sets of cuts, right? These are the cuts in G prime, and the whole thing is uh, cuts in, so these are uh, cuts in uh, G prime, and these are cuts in uh, G, right? Because we shown that whenever something is a cut in G prime, by splitting the vertices apart, but keeping them in the same piece of the partition, right? This now, the mean cut that was here, will be available as a cut in this graph, obtained from, you know, just by, will be in the same partition, right? But this is now exactly as the old graph, and the, because I separated the two fused vertices, but I separate them in such a way that I keep them on the same side of partition. Now clearly, so every cut here has its brother that is a cut in original graph by simply splitting a little bit the two fused vertices but keeping it in the same part of the cut, right? Now if you take min over a larger set, how does it compare when you take a mean of numbers of a smaller set? Which mean can be smaller? Mean of elements in G prime or mean of elements all in all G? Hmm? All G, of course, right? Because there are more now, everything available in G prime is available in G, so the smallest number in G cannot be uh, larger than smallest number here, right? So we conclude uh, that in the second case, uh, so the conclusion is that mean cut in G prime can be only bigger or equal than mean cut in G. Okay, so let us now compute the probability that uh, as I go along and uh, um, do the fusion of vertices, what will be the probability that the very last edge is equal, its capacity is exactly the capacity of mean cut? So let us compute that. You know, one thing that uh, strikes about this algorithm is that the operation is so simple and it looks really hard to believe that it can actually produce the correct answer with large probability, but lo and behold, it can be tweaked into one that achieves exactly that. Okay, so the next thing that we have to do is uh, um, is what do we have to do? Aha, okay. So we want to do now the following. 
um, we want to find uh, when we, so uh, if we choose uh, um, the edges according to their weight, uh, so if we choose uh, edges uh, Uh, to their weight, uh, then um, probability that uh, an edge UV uh, belongs to the mean cut uh, is equal to uh, the capacity, so it is equal to the capacity of this mean cut, so it is sum of uh, V, uh, uh, v E prime uh, such that E prime is across, how do you spell across, is this correct? 1C only, I'm disappointed. Across um, uh, the cut uh, divided by the sum of the weights in the whole graph. So it is sum of the weights E prime that belong to the whole G and then weight, well, of E second, right? Right, because we choose the, uh, the edges according to their probability. So probability to go across the cut is then simply the sum of weights of those that uh, go across the cut divided by the sum of weights of all edges. Now we want to do some uh, estimation. Um, and to do that, uh, we now notice the following thing. So fix um, uh, okay so we okay so this is what we want to prove that uh, so we prove claim um, that says that probability that uh, UV uh, belongs to the mean cut of G is uh, smaller or equal than 2 to the 2 over n, when n is the number of vertices. So n is the cardinality of vertices. How do we prove that? Well, this is actually fairly simple. Just notice that some of the weights of all edges, so uh, how do I say ij divided by, uh, sorry, let me write it in a consistent way. And I claim that two times sum of uh, over all edges that belong to G of E, of weight of E, is equal to the sum uh, when V belongs to G. And then here I have sum 
over all u that belongs to, uh, so, so all uh, um, u such that uh, uv uh, belongs to g, and then uh, weight of uv. What is this? So I am summing over all vertices in G. What is this? This is sum of the weights of all edges that uh, contain U. So if you take U and you consider all edges that, uh, uh, that are connected with U, then this represents sum of all edges that are incident to vertex u. Why is this formula correct? Why is it twice the sum of all weights of all edges in E? Why is it equal to this double sum? Yes? Exactly. Here, Every edge is counted twice. If you have an edge u, v, it's counted once with u and once with v. So every edge is double counted. But now I claim that this sum here is smaller or equal than the capacity of... Uh, mean cut, why is this so? Sorry, sorry, not smaller and equal, that it is larger or equal than the capacity of mean cut. Why is this the case? Why some of the weights of all edges incident to a single vertex? Why does this have to be larger or equal than the capacity of minimal cut. Yes? So you can just pass around that vertex? Exactly. So if you just take one side of partition to be singleton U and the rest to be all other vertices, uh, then this is a well-defined cut. Its capacity must be larger or equal than the capacity of mean cut. So thus, this guy has to be larger than mean cut. So let's see what we get now. Okay, <clears throat> so what do we have? Uh, so we have the following, that sum total of all weights, uh, twice sum total, so two times sum of uh, all weights, uh, I think we use double prime, E double prime, so that the of, uh, of the weights, right, of all edges in G is then bigger or equal than how many sums of these sums I have. And I range with V over the whole graph. I have uh, N many vertices, as many as I have vertices, so N. So this is bigger or equal than N times the capacity of mean cut, right? So what do we have now? We have that, remember the probability here. So we have the probability that edge uv belongs to mean cut right, is equal capacity of the mean cut, so sum of all of uh, uh, weight 
of E prime such that E prime belongs to mean cut. It's across mean cut, right? Over, and now I'll use this estimate because this is larger than that, then this here will be smaller or equal then I will write what? Uh, so this will be n times uh, sum of uh, all edges that E prime belongs to mean cut. Right? So, uh, sorry, sorry, so this is uh, uh, n divided by 2, right? Because uh, uh, the bottom, I am replacing the bottom, which is this, uh, with, uh, I, I have to divide by 2. Now, this cancels with this, and we got that this is equal to 2 over n. So at each collapse, so notice, I will ruin the capacity of mean cut. Mean cut can be ruined only if you collapse vertices across the mean cut, right? So, uh, I, but the probability that an edge belongs to mean cut is smaller than 2 over n. So very first collapse, so probability um, uh, to get mean cut wrong uh, is smaller than, um, is smaller than, um, ba -ba -ba -bum, um, So this is probability that, let me see, sorry. So probability that, uh, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so let me compute probability to get mean cut right. You will get it right if you never collapse edges that are across the cut. So not to collapse the edge that is uh, in the mean cut is then 1 minus 2 over n. Because 2 over n is probability to collapse something in, in, the, uh, uh, in the mean cut. In the second stage, you have one vertex less. So it's 1 over 2 divided by n minus 1 all the way 1 minus uh, 2 divided by 3, right? Uh, yes? Is the inequality sign to be switched around? Probability? You've, you've taken the complement of both sides. So like in your, in your equation above, probability usually is in the mean cut, less than or equal to 2 on n. Yes. But you want the complement. So if you multiply that by minus 1, then... Wait, 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 wait. So if this is the probability to be in the mean cut, right? Yeah. Then probability not to be, probability that u v is not in the mean cut one is equal 1 minus 2 over n, right? Well, but it's 1 minus probability it is in the mean cut. Which is smaller than that. Mm -hmm. yeah, minus 2 uv in min cut is greater than or equal to minus 2 on n. And then you add one to both sides. And that gives you t uv not in min cut. Ah, you're right, you're right, you're right. So it's like this, right? Yeah. Yes. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <coughs> right, because this is probability that you are in min cut 
probability to get mean cut right means you never collapse across the mean cut. You do not collapse uh, across the mean cut, at least with this probability, right? So when you now look what this is, it's n minus 2 over n times uh, n minus 1 minus 2 is n minus 3 over n minus 1 times. Then the next one is n minus 4 over n minus 2, right? And then times n minus 5 over n minus 3 times, and this is one third at the very end. And now notice this, this cancels this, this cancels this, all the way until, so the only thing left is this, so, um, uh, 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 and of course here you have 2 over 4, and the last one to cancel will be this 3 with this 3, this 4 with this. So on top you have 2, right, because of this how they are offset, this is offset for 2, so 2 over n times n minus 1, which is uh, of the order of 1 over n squared. So probability not to mess up is only of order of magnitude uh, 2 over n squared, uh, right, which is extremely small. And of course, if you had probability over su of success, 1 over n squared, uh, how can you hope, uh, how many times you would have to repeat uh, uh, the experiment to get things right? So this is now the trick, kind of crucial trick. You see, the point here is uh, that probability not to mess up is relatively large when uh, the number of vertices is large, right? And things get messed up only uh, because of these numbers, right? So the idea now is this is very close to one, right? But as you go down, the numbers become smaller and smaller. And the idea how to remedy this is First, we compute what's the probability of a failure if you collapse only half of the edges, uh, half of the vertices, right? So after each collapse, you have a vertex less. So probability not to mess up, to preserve the mean cut, if you collapse, if you go only up to n over 2, is actually reasonably large. So let's see how big it is. So we have now that probability, uh, probability that uh, mean cut is preserved is bigger or equal than, the first one is uh, 1 minus 2 over n, then 1 minus 2 over n minus 1, going like this only up to 1 minus 2 over n over 2. Right? We stop when we reach half of the vertices. What is this here? Now if you compute this, this turns out to be, uh, let's see, so this is equal to n minus 2 over n as before, then n minus 3 over n minus 1, and then n minus 4 over n minus 2, 
and then n minus 5 over n minus 3. All the way you go, the very last ones will be uh, n over 2 times n over 2 minus 1 times, um, ba -ba -ba -bum, let me see, uh, n over 2 minus 2. And here we go all the way up to um, n mm, over 2. Right now, again, you have the cancellations. Uh, so here, uh, yeah, I should have, uh, uh, yeah, I wrote them in the opposite order, so this can be confusing to you. So let me, um, is this ends? Uh, so we can write it as, uh, uh, let's see, n over 2 minus 2, n over 2 minus 1, and then the last is n over 2. Right, so this then all cancels out, and only the two last ones survive here, and you get uh, this n over 2 cancels with this n over 2, and you get that this is equal to uh, n over 2 minus 2 uh, times n over 2 minus 1 divided what is left here, right? So here this increase, right, what you sub subtract. Ah, so it's actually better in the other, the, well, doesn't matter. So like this, like this, right? So, um, so you get here uh, this divided by n times n minus 1. And this is approximately equal to what? This is approximately n over 2, n over 2, and this is n, n. So this is approximately 1 quarter. So if you stop after you collapse only half of the vertices, uh, probability that you didn't cause, that you didn't ruin the mean cut, that you never cut across the mean cut, is actually quite large. It's one fourth. Now, this is the trick. So the things get bad when we start collapsing more and more vertices. So we will have more and more trials as the number of vertices decreases. I'll uh, type up these notes and put them on the web. You don't have to worry. So um, you will have, so the idea is this. You start with a graph of, uh, uh, with n vertices. Then you have one fourth probability, at least, uh, to have correct mean cut uh, for a, a graph of size n over 2. But you, what you will do, you will perform this restriction four times. So you will create randomly four cases of size n over 2, n over 2, n over 2. So you start your randomized collapsing, uh, and you stop it when you get n over 2 uh, vertices. Then you restart on the original graph your collapsing with probability one fourth. You get a correct graph of size n over 2. And you repeat it four times. And in each next step, so now you will go to n over 4 uh, size graph with four runs of the previous algorithm, right? So you see. Here, the probability of collapsing a mean cut is small, one quarter, right? But as you, the graph, so probability when you collapse this will be, uh, because the graph is half of the size, the, it will be much larger than the probability to collapse the mean cut when you run here. 
For that reason, you generate four copies of this uh, collapsing, right? And then each of them, you collapse in four, after, with four runs of your algorithm into the graph of size n over four. And again, each of these, you collapse uh, always four times. So notice, for large graphs, you do your operation only four times, but with smaller graphs, you generate more and more random instances. And the way how the probability of messing up things increases uh, is offset by sheer size of randomly generated instances of that size. So you don't repeat the whole algorithm many, many times. You repeat only half run of the algorithm four times, then you collapse these graphs into quarter size, four times each, and as the probabilities of messing uh, the graph, uh, the mean cut increases, the total number of instances increases in exactly the same way so that the ending probability <coughs> will be of success will be large. So this is what we are going to uh, do finish off next week. So I'll type up the notes and put them on the web. It's a really pretty algorithm, so uh, take, a, take a look, please.